everybody. This is Mr. O. And today's lesson is going to be on value. Uh, this is going to be just the very basics of uh, shading and understanding what, um, what that means to your art and some very basic techniques. Uh, now, I drew up this worksheet. Um, if you're a teacher or even if you're uh, a student and you would like to have a copy of this, I'm going to attach my Mr. O Art School email uh, to the bottom of this video. And guys, just send me an email and I will send you the form. Now, as I'm kind of developing these things, ask what you're wanting because I, I won't know which worksheet. Um, if you just email, please send me one. Uh, just say, ask for the value worksheet. I'll send it to you. Um, something I had always suggested to my students when they did this, uh, tape it above where you draw. Keep it with you if you're a traveling artist uh, so you understand and always ask your question, you know, am I getting from the, from the lightest to the darkest and everything in between? And these things help you to remind you, um, you know, light, medium, dark, is that in all the colors that I'm doing? And, and that's basically the definition of value, the range of light and darkness within a color, um, within your drawing, and just like it, to improve that. It gives that perspective, that little more, that touch of realism. And uh, so let's just go over the worksheet of what I'm going to demonstrate today. Um, I'm going to uh, demonstrate the, the little rectangles here from light to dark. Um, I'm going to go over the three basic techniques and well, I'm just going to review the sketch. I'm not going to sketch in front of you. you. You guys can do that on your own. I'm going to start off with a blank sheet. Uh, so you can actually draw this up if you want. I'm, I'm using, I'm drawing with a Ticonderoga pencil. I do use other types of pencils, uh, mechanical pencils, um, and a lot with different uh, values, 2Bs, 4Bs, 6Bs. But for the darker, I'm going to use the Design Ebony Pencil. And if you have a pencil set and you have a 6B or an 8B, that'll be just fine. That'll be just perfect. I'll do a video just talking about all the different kinds of pencils and uh, the good uses. I think I'll turn this light on. There we go. We'll get a little brighter. Sorry about that, guys. The other thing I'm going to use just to keep my hands a little clean, you can use a tissue or your finger. Um, I got a paper stylus. Uh, they sell these in most arts and craft stores. Uh, you can get a little bundle for like $2, but, you know, some stores have coupons. You can get them cheaper than that. And all this is is really wadded up paper, really nice and tight, and it allows me to smudge. As you can see, I've been using it quite a bit. Um, the other thing I might use is my famous kneaded eraser. Love these things. Uh, one of the great art erasers. Um, I usually uh, give them out to students, and I get colored ones, and the red ones always get thrown away because teachers and lunch ladies think they're gum. And uh, so the kids lose them on, on accident uh, when they leave them out. So let's just get started. I'm talking on a tangent. So I'm going to first use my Tag Kangaroga pencil. And we're going to go from light to dark because we're going to talk about the range of shading. And the first square, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to leave that white. And in the second square, now look how I'm holding the pencil. This is what helps me keep things light. I'm just going to go back and forth nice and smooth. Now you might get more of a line if you have your pencil too sharp. It's okay if it's sharp. This one's a little darker than I would normally like, but that's okay. I'll go with it. Um, so I know that's darker than that, so I'm good. So I go to the next square, a rectangle, and notice how I'm, I'm trying to actually just make it even with it. Not being perfect. Doesn't, you don't need to stay within the lines. Our teachers are terrible in telling you that, or maybe it's teachers. I think it's teachers, kindergarten teachers. I, I can't tell you how many, when I taught elementary, uh, how many kindergartners got really upset when they went outside the line and I'm like, this is art. It happens. Don't, don't worry about being perfect. You're going to make mistakes. And that doesn't excuse everything. You know, sometimes you, you do want to color real nice. 
Not everything that's sloppy is art. And you'll find that Mr. O is very opinionated of what is art and what is not. Maybe that's good, maybe that's not. Now, this fifth square rectangle um, is going to be the last one I use the Ticonderoga pencil. And you'll notice that I'm going back and forth, like crossing, and that helps me keep keep everything smooth, and I can get darker with just a little bit of pressure. And I'm just going back and forth, nice and smooth. And as you can see, I get lighter as I go or darker as I go. Now I'm going to switch to the ebony pencil. And I'm going to do the same thing because I don't want to get too dark too fast. That's the danger of the ebony pencil. You put too much pressure and it'll become very dark very fast. And the transition between the Ticonderoga and the ebony pencil, it's okay if it's just a little bit darker. As you can see, it is a little bit darker. I'm going to go. And I'm going to just kind of, I guess I'm just going to ramble, but I don't need to describe what I'm doing anymore. Because I think it kind of makes sense for the rest. And that's my button uh, clicking on the uh, table there, so I'm sorry. I need to get some music. i got to get a musician. I know I have so many former students that are musicians. They need to uh, create some background music for me. And uh, ones I can use in my video that won't get them striked. Now, Mr. O's Art School started as a summer program just to give kids other uh, avenues of learning art because during the summer it's hard and with everything being shut down right now and slowly opening up I'm not sure if I can do summer classes so I thought maybe it's just time to finally do uh, videos online for free um, if you want to contribute there's a patreon uh, but that's for your parents uh, so you talk to them about that. And now I'm going to go through the three techniques. Uh, hatching, which is basically just lines. And I just want you to see how I do this. And they're not perfect. And I just start there. Now if I go, oh, I want those a little longer, I just go. Don't worry about being even or anything like that. And then cross hatching. Just like hatching, and then I cross. Now, something to understand with hatching or cross hatching, if you make the distance in between smaller, it gets darker. And it creates uh, a little more shading in case you need that darker. Now, smudging. Smudging is the one you can use your finger. And I'll tell you what, you see this D here? Mr. O is a terrible speller because he's been spelling it for like 15 years without the D. He's forgot to put the D in. So there's probably a lot of students who are so polite and just said, uh, you know, Mr. O, you, you misspelled that. They don't say that to me. That or they didn't know it was misspelled either, which is both a possibility. It looked right. I just didn't have the D and probably had an extra G. Uh, I just know I wasn't spelling it right. So if you spell smudging, don't forget to add that. Um, D, and you see what I'm using? See, I'm using this paper stylus. It, and what the best part is, it keeps the finger clean. The other way you can use this stylus is by just putting the pencil right on to the stylus, and you can smudge from there. Now, the eraser, and this is where I'll talk about in my sketch how I used it with the light. You can go back in and draw with your eraser through the smudging or even actually any of the techniques. But if you want to lighten something up, you can use your eraser. And if you go too, a little too far, you just go back in and smooth that out. And that's how a lot of artists get those really nice techniques when it comes to shading and shadowing. 
Um, let's go back to this. And uh, as you can see, I did a skull. Um, I'm going to be doing a lesson on skulls. I've been having a lot of requests. I'm even going to teach a summer class just on swords and skulls and talking about, you know, how do you take this and put it here? And just as a, a little example to remind you, what I tell students is we have light and dark. We always have light and dark when we draw. We, we draw an outline and something's lighter, something's darker. What you're trying to do is now add medium, and then medium light and medium dark. If you can get three, you know, just start getting that medium. Ask yourself when you look at this, can you see light? Can you see dark? Can you see medium dark? Can you see medium light? And can you see medium? And I hope you can see all of that. Um, and that's what your goal is is today when you do this worksheet is just draw something that you like you could do a skull too just look one up on the computer if you have access to a computer which i assume you do because you're watching this video um or uh just take a still life object just grab some stuff your shoe and just draw your shoe and put some shading and shadowing uh hey guys uh this is all that i have for today I want you to know with this dying pen, you are not alone. You are important. And you are most importantly loved. Never forget that, guys. I just know many, many students who are artists who don't realize they are not alone in this world, and they're very important, and they're very loved. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I look forward to making my next one. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.